Hey folks, this is Ben Gessel. This is part two of this topic of what we see in other people. I just, yeah, man, I could talk about this the rest of the night. So many things to talk about with this video. I might do that at some point and take it easy, I think, but look, we just get it wrong. I mean, look, if we get it right, if we truly, if we truly get somebody, we truly understand someone, how often does that really happen? Ask yourself, how, how often does it really happen? Now you can think that you understand somebody really well. Maybe you, maybe you don't like him. Maybe you do. Maybe you just feel like there's just not a, maybe this person doesn't give you time of day. They don't make it possible for you to talk to them more. It could be any kind of relationship. But you, this is another thing that's frustrating about life. You go through this, you're often rejected. Or you're brushed off. Or you're made to feel not welcome. On some level. Like someone else is a kind of stranger. They're still a little bit uneasy about you. You sense it. Like, oh. Right? Why bother? Why bother? Why, why bother with the awkwardness? Because it's awkward for them. Let's make it less awkward for both of you guys. And just let them be. Right? Leave them alone. That's how it often is with... with other people, right? Let's just face it. We've all felt that at some, at some level. On some level we have. If everything is going great for somebody socially, everything, maybe there's just somebody. Maybe let's, let's take a person who's like a coach or works with youth. There's a youth that he's working with, young person, and they don't want anything to do with him. We want to kind of, whatever. When you're a coach, by the way, you probably shouldn't be spending any alone time. <laughs> it's like a you know a job, or I don't know. Well, let's just say this is a church thing, but even a church thing is a little different. But somebody really wants to help a young person on some level. Takes a takes an interest in helping a person. Well, okay. But, but for this young person to be helped by this adult in a manner that's kosher and respectable, first, that young person has to trust that older person. And we all know that comes down to that older person's character, ultimately. What kind of person they are. But there's also all the other things that this young person is confused about in life. Confused about themselves, confused about the world, confused about who people are. This young person might be confused why this older person is taking an interest in them. If their own, this young person's own parents, we'll just say it's a young man. Well, if this, this young, young man's own parents don't treat him very well. So why is this, why is he trying to help me? Right? The, you guys have probably seen also the videos when you're younger about, or at some level, some way, shape, or form. Some kind of video about helping people with disabilities. Or just helping people. And you've seen the really cheesy... <sighs> cheesier kinds of... Almost uh, obviously, you know, just... Well, this is obviously an attempt to make this other person feel better. Right? Or to help this person, right? There's this... You know what I'm talking about. You know, whether it's something you see in school or church or something like that. Maybe it's something about stopping bullying. Maybe it's something about understanding people with disabilities better. Maybe it's just being a nicer person, kinder person. I'm sure you've seen some kind of video in this regard. Before. Something. On some level. Whether it's in school or church or somewhere else. At home. Well... You know, it all starts with intent. It all starts with our desires. If you want, if I want to make a new friend, if I want to make new friends, it doesn't matter what they're like, it doesn't matter about all the things I mentioned before in the last video, it doesn't intelligence, maybe not even kindness in some respects, maybe not the type of person I would normally expect to be my friend. 
or whoever else you are thinking of. If I just want to connect more with people, again, just more relationships, hopefully a romantic one, right? Because you can date and date and date, but eh, you know, I don't know. That's a somewhat different thing. But the thing is, is um, people that are being helped or people that uh, are seen by others as needing help in some area, something like that, need a friend, need someone to talk to. Nobody wants to feel pitied, folks. Nobody wants to feel pitied. Nobody wants to feel like the little guy at the totem pole. No, nobody likes to feel disabled. And that nobody likes to feel like they have Down syndrome, even if they do. Nobody likes to feel different, awkward, weird, inadequate in some way. No one. Nobody likes to feel dumb and stupid compared to other people. I don't tell people that they're dumb and stupid compared to me. Why would I do that? I might think it. It's wrong to think that way. So I don't say it. Right? Who wants to be told that they're not as intelligent as me? And why would I invite someone to think that I am an arrogant person for thinking that or saying that? Or an unkind person? Even if there's some truth to it, if you really think about it hard enough, if God wanted us all to be... <sighs> if equal intelligence, he would have made us that way. If God wanted us... You, know, you can keep just going down all the different attributes. So there are differences between us. These differences are vexing. They're hard. But I guess they're there for a reason. Oh, it's the variety of the spice of life. Well, sometimes that variety gets a little bit uh, not so fun to deal with. Sometimes you want some more pepper. Actually, no, sometimes you want some more cherries, maybe a little less peas, right? That's how it is with, sure. Nobody likes to be around people that are just dull, unkind all day, put them down, mean, cruel. Nobody. People also don't just don't like people. The other personality things that are just everybody's different that way. Nobody likes to deal with people that keep talking and talking and talking about what they think is just nonsense, or they can't follow them, or people just have different ideas about different boundaries, personal boundaries. But some people are just weird, and and people sometimes get annoyed by that. Some people, other people find that great. Just want to hear from people, no matter how odd they are, no matter how weird they are, no matter how eccentric or crazy their thoughts are, no matter how much they just talk about the weather, even if they're not trying to, you know what I mean? Like, some people just want to talk because they're trying to be friendly. Some people have Down syndrome. Some people have autism and Tourette syndrome, and some people stutter all the time when they talk. And, you know, these are all these things that we just have preferences for, but we're all different, so we can't expect everybody to be a football jock or cheerleader or a brainy mad scientist, you know, a prodigy in the piano. You can't expect everybody to be that way. Sorry, China. You can't expect every little boy and girl to be a prodigy in the piano. There, I said it. Sorry, China. I know. I can take that one. Cheek, if I need some kung fu on me, by all means, I won't hit back. <laughs> Just trying to light, lighten the mood here a little bit. Okay. I love China. Okay, so the thing is, folks, I might, might move on to another point here in a second, but uh, I think you kind of get the drift of what I'm trying to say, at least. We just don't understand people the way we ought to. We don't. We don't value the people the way we ought to. We just don't. So many people, so many people are just sad and lonely and crying inside all the time. We never see it. It's too easy just to kind of be blind to them, just consume with their own lives. The harder working we are, the more successful we are, the more money we make, the more well thought of we are by our peers. It's an illusion. So many things in life are an illusion. You might come to a point where you realize that, but maybe it's a little too late to realize that in some respects. So many things that we've lived for are an illusion. So what are the things that matter? Well, these are some of the, th the things I'm talking about right now 
are actually the things that matter in life. How we talk to other people, how we, our relationships, in addition to character. It does, it really matters. It's just something that really honestly matters. It matters more than our skills. It matters more than our grades. It matters more than our income. It matters more than our jobs. It matters more than if we're married or not, or if we have kids or not. It, that matters, but not as much as you might think. And really, I mean, it, it comes down to character. It comes down to how we treat other people. Ah, uh, huge. I mean, I could, again, I can make multiple videos about this. When you hear about this stuff at church, if you go to church, it, it's like you often hear this, treat others as you would want to be treated. You hear all this stuff from Jesus. You hear it all the time, and it starts to become not meaningless. Yeah, kind of in a way, because you just, oh, there you go again. There's the Sermon on the Mount, right? Jesus, the Beatitudes. And also love one another, and he's washing the feet of the disciples and all this stuff. And, we, you know, we know this story. You know, I grew up in a church. You, you, it's so easy just to uh, da, 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 roll your eyes, right? Oh, boy, here we go again. Bye -bye. You don't even have to be like George Carlin about religion. You can just, you're coming a mile away and just... And that's why a, lot, a lot, the way a lot of people are bored with religion. We, just, we know the Bible. Maybe you're like, oh, the Bible is over 1,500 pages. King James Version, so you're like, maybe there's still a lot more we don't know. So maybe you go to church just just because the Bible is a big book. You don't know it as well as maybe you should think you should. Well, that's a good reason to go to church. It's something to keep you going. Yes, you know something about that going to church thing especially my opinion my church but we won't get you know that's whatever oh, sure of course but look we know that going to church is a good thing if you are getting you feel like you're getting something spiritual out of it uh, anyway that's another subject we'll try to get to later but let's just start getting to get back to how we treat other people because this is a very spiritual thing okay so the nature of our relationship with other people let's just Take another angle here. I'm going to just maybe think of Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman on the bucket list movie for a bit here, and maybe elderly people in general. What do old people want to do? What do you see as far as trends with older people? Well, they can't dance as well as younger people. They're probably not as high energy as mobile. Maybe they envy younger people and their energy. Sure they do. Sure they do. When I get to a certain age, I will. I know I will. It's no big mystery. Right? A lot of things you can be about younger people, but younger people don't know as much as older people. They haven't lived life as long. They just don't... They just, they're brainless. They say stupid. They do stupid things. Kids even more than that, in a way. So, youth has its advantages. Being old has its advantages, and we're all going to get old. Every one of us. Depends on when we die. Well, I guess not all of us, but... Anyway, um, but what do old, old people want to do? Older people. Wh whoever you consider to be older. That's a different to a concept for everybody. Well, it might have something to do with relationships with other people. Hmm. Imagine that. Imagine that. So, you haven't had a whole lot of great relationships when you're younger. What do you still want in life? Relationships with other people. Hmm. Makes sense to me. And if you still don't have a whole lot of relationships with other people, you still have to be a good person. You still have to carry on in life. You still have to do your best, right? So when someone comes along, an old person, belittles them in any way, shape, or form, but infers that they're just, because they're old, They've, they're too old to make new friends. They're too old to live life to the fullest. They're too old to do this or that or this or that. Okay. Does that sound like a wrong thing to do? Yeah, it definitely does, in my opinion. I wouldn't even dream of speaking to anyone who's an old, older person, in my estimation. I wouldn't even dream of it. Why would anybody say something like that? It's completely, completely, in my opinion, it's straight up evil, wrong, satanic. You don't know if that old person is going to commit suicide because of that, what that person's been saying to them. Why is it any different if it's, if it's a younger person? I'm just considering an elderly person, but you could say someone's not worth 
living. Like the life, your life is go kill yourself. You, you see that all the time on YouTube. But these are like 15 year olds talking to each other, 12 year olds even. Shockingly enough, it's unthinkable. It's absolutely, there's absolutely no excuse for it. Well, I can consider that maybe there's a lot of abuse going on. <laughs> so sometimes when people say something quite like that, hateful and wrong. So, you know, again, there's just different levels of intent when people say these kinds of things. But old folks, getting back to my earlier point, old folks value people. They might also value some things other than people, but increasingly it's other people. It's, you know, <laughs> you know, that's what it comes down to. You know, it might be they're like, oh, I like my old TV show. I watched when I was younger. I like listening to this group, this music, whatever. Or I like, I remember, you know, it, it always comes back to people. It always comes back to memories. It always comes back. To, and if you have an older person that's very sad, it could be for a variety of reasons when they're older. It could be they just haven't known the people they wanted to know in this life. Could be they missed. They felt like they missed out on some something romantic, somebody that they remember when they're younger, and they are very sad that they never got married. It could be, gosh, I don't know, all kinds of things. Could be they miss their sons and daughters. They never visit them, or they're dead. They miss their spouse. They regret decisions they've made. You know. Whether it's sins or it's just other decisions in life, they're wondering if they should have done something different, took a different path. What if they met other people, kind of thing that maybe would have made their lives better. All that kind of stuff. There's all kinds of reasons why old people could be sad, and if older people are happy, well, why are they happy? Yeah. But what are they going to? No matter what, no matter what, what are they going to talk about? What are they going to value? What are they going to be all about? You know, they're going to be about other people, aren't they? On some level, they are going to be about other people. Maybe it's always the same people. Maybe it's maybe they have some kind of club they get together and they pay, play cards or they play bingo. Right? Why do you think old people go play bingo? So they could be around other, not just older old people, but they could just be around people. They don't want to be by themselves. They don't want to be in bed cooped up unless they have to be. They want to be out having fun, maybe doing things, maybe doing things more recreationally as opposed to all the work they did when they were younger. And by some rare occurrences, people that maybe haven't done any real work in life might feel uh, maybe they could have worked harder. <laughs> so, okay, old people. Well, let's move on to something else here a little bit. How we treat other people, how we see other people. Well, a lot of people I've known in life have been a little bit spontaneous and a little bit impulsive, put it that way. Not always in ways I really like. And it's really easy just to say to myself, hmm, why? You know. Why, why, why? Well, and you're surrounded by a gaggle of girls, whether you're 14, 24, 34, 44, 54, or 64, 74. No matter how and these girls, I'm, I'm picking on girls here a little bit. I know I should, you know. Don't worry, I won't pick on them too hard. When you're surrounded by these gaggle of girls that are just being silly and stupid and talking about meaningless, dumb, stupid things. So this is the type of girls that I tried to avoid when I was younger. And it's weird, a little bit weird, if they're, you know, cousins. They're related to you. But they're just, you're just not feeling it. And you're like, you know, it just, it doesn't matter how old you are. You, you still know what type of girls I'm talking about. It doesn't even matter if they're some of your friends. I mean, you, you sometimes some girls will just be friends with people because they don't want to be by themselves. So, you know, I understand guys the same way we just maybe don't always have this strong of a desire to always be with your group depends on the guy some guys definitely do 
worry about this. Oh, yes, but girls especially so. I think in my estimation, we do they do not want to be seen as being unpopular when they're younger. That's at least the case in the United States, Western world. But I'm sure there's some connection with other places in the world in this regard. So you take this giggle of girls. It doesn't really matter what they're talking about. That's of not very much importance in your opinion. And you think to yourself, oh boy, let me just leave. I'm going to leave their presence. Well, you know, what if, what if, um, what if you sense a little bit of real humanity from a few of them? but they're afraid of showing their nicer natures to their meaner friends. Does it depend on what age you are? Does it depend on what gender you are? What you say to them? Well, if you want to say anything to them, are you going to say something like, repent ye, repent ye, for thinking such bad things about someone else, or talking about someone behind their back, or who's dating who, and who's whatever? Well... Gosh, I don't know. I just know that on some level, you could be try to be funny and you make a... F I wouldn't say a fool of yourself. That sounds really mean. But you could try to attempt to be funny and it could not work. <laughs> you could try to be... Just say hi and just I'm passing. Don't mind me. Some girls are going to look at you in a really really suspicious way no matter what that's okay <laughs> just you could say anything any number of other things you know, any other, but, 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 but how you know if you are wanting to have things more pleasant with those folks even if you don't like their company well you can always say something like well, that's interesting uh, this is what I think of this person you know talking about other people behind their back. Because that's what girls do. A lot of girls like to gossip, you know. Gossiping, gossiping. I know it's a stereotype. It's definitely not always the case. We're talking about gay girls with girls, though, so we're definitely talking about gossiping on some level. Okay, so if you say something particularly sobering to them, will that help make them feel bad about what they're saying? If you say something that's very insightful, would they feel stupid? Judgmental. If you show someone up, and I can switch this very, very quickly over to the guys here. I don't have to pick on girls anymore. Let's pick on guys here for a bit when I'm growing up. Oh, man, I can't tell you how many times I had the feeling that I was being seen as a teacher's pet because I read the encyclopedia every day. I knew all this stuff. I knew all the answers to all the questions teacher, teachers would ask. In social studies, especially. And when you're always the person raising your hand because you're tired of the silence coming from the rest of the class because they are not reading encyclopedia every day, rather they're doing other things. <laughs> yep, in the United States, especially at least in the 80s and 90s, my time period when I was in school. Well, <sighs> you're going to be a teacher's pet and you're going to get teased for it. So you often don't raise your hand because you don't want to get teased. This, this, in getting to the guys here, guys you know, value strength and size and speed. I'm sure that we also value intelligence, but many times it's, it takes second place to something athletic. Or aggressive. You're a tough guy, being really assertive, all that stuff. Talking to a group of guys. And they're doing something similar to that giggle, giggle of girls I'm talking about here. They're, this group of guys is talking about other people. I mean, it's varying, but it's often not very pleasant to hear. Well, you could say the same thing to them. You can make them feel like idiots. Yeah. Or you could just say, hey, man, I don't like this. I don't like this. Knock it off. They can always tell you to leave. So many of us don't say anything. We just let, let it continue. It's the verdict in some level is out. It's out there regarding do you ignore people, leave them alone, or do you say something? It's a 
totally a judgment call and it's a tough way to go either way but you know the more that you do hear something that's very disparaging about someone doesn't really matter what it is doesn't matter all if it's true or not and you know it's it just depends but you know hey there are definitely times when you need to step it up and say something take scots especially talking with guys that are ahead taller than you and bigger muscles than you and they're going to use them Oh, yeah. You might feel courage to going up to giggle girls, whether they're cute or not. You have plenty of courage talking to girls because they're girls. They're not going to punch you really hard when you're younger, but those guys, they might punch you. They might kick you. Yeah, whatever they do, it's not going to feel very good. <laughs> if you get on the bad side. And so we were clever, or we can be very bold. You'd say, well, you're probably not going to hit me because that's, you're just going to get in trouble. But if they hit you, you're like, whoa. Anyway. But you'll feel good for standing up for that person who's being gossiped about. You will. Even if you have a broken jaw. Right? We do try to watch the size of our people we're talking to. <laughs> if it's going to be something potentially violent. Of course. But... We just don't always know if they're going to punch or not. And sometimes we still have to say something. It's just, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're younger or older. Older people still lose their temper. We just know that there's a law in effect that makes it really bad if you do take a swing at someone. <laughs> it's just... But it doesn't change... No, it doesn't change the way that people are. And if you are a gossiper when you're a little girl or boy and you love to gossip, you're going to be a gossiper when you get older. It's a, it's a habit. There's so many of these habits in life. And how we are, how we are in our character, in our personal lives, private lives, you know, how we are with other people, how we talk to other people, if we swear or not. These are all habits. These are all habits. And they're mental, and they're verbal, and they're physical, and they're emotional, and they're intellectual. And the more we do them, the stronger that habit becomes. The more, the more that it becomes part of our character. It might be in passing. It might not be permanent. But the more we do it, the more it does become something more permanent or can become something more permanent. Maybe not completely permanent. It's up to us if we want to change something, right? Well, hmm. how we talk about other people, how we see other people, getting into some other stuff here. Um... You'll never know that someone's suicidal or someone's uh, going through some crap until they say it. You'll just never know. Myself included. Some people are very, keep a lot of things inside ourselves. We don't want other people to, we don't want people at large to know this stuff. So it takes a great deal of trust in someone to say certain things about ourselves. It does. Sometimes it takes a massive amount of trust. Imagine when that trust is violated. Just imagine when it's violated, if that ever happens. This is one of the reasons why I take trust that students have in me extremely, extremely seriously. If a student, doesn't matter what they say, says something about themselves or whatever, you know, depending on what it is, I might have a chat with the parents. Maybe. You know. Sometimes you just let it go and pretend they never said it. But, you know, it just depends on what it is. But, yeah, gosh, man. The level of trust that some people have in other people is something that should not be trifled with. And so you have to be, you need to be trustworthy. What does that mean? Well, I think that you probably know what I'm talking about here. The more, the, the, the better a person you are, the more character you have, the more you like God, the more trustworthy that you are as a person. It's a moral thing, but it also definitely applies to our socialization of other people, our relationships with other people. How can someone who's untrustworthy? Oh, it's such a big thing. We're, we're talking about other people in work situations, professional situations, personal situations, marriages. How can someone who's untrustworthy? Oh, you know, I, 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 it's such an emotional thing that I'm having a hard time maybe explaining this, my thoughts. 
But it's this is this is a serious matter. It's 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 profoundly serious. Sometimes it's yeah. Uh, if you we break someone's trust, now we talk we can talk about trust regarding like boyfriend girlfriend younger someone cheats quote quote unquote on somebody whether or not something actually sexual in nature actually happened yeah yeah boy just that's there's a lot of juvenile trains of thought with that whole thing but you know when you trust someone on some level and they break that trust it hurts really bad and this is definitely one of the things that can cause people to not want to open up to other people after that happens and oh man I, I don't know how many times this happens to other people I just it's I, I have no idea how often this might happen to other people I just know what's happening in my own life you know so it's kind of like well you want to meet people that are trustworthy right I'm assuming that you do so how do you know if someone's trustworthy and what it is that what you know we we're none of us are perfect but so what's your standard of perfection how perfect does someone need to be in order for you to trust them more deeply and what would break that trust and it's a little different for all of us i think but you know ultimately we're talking about becoming better people so people of similar character i think hopefully should be getting married not people of different characters. We have different characters in a way even deeper than different cultures, of course. It, it just really messes with the marriage in my estimation. I wouldn't know personally, of course. wouldn't have any idea personally, but I'm this video will have to wrap this up in here a second, but you know, just try to be a trustworthy person yourself. If you want to make more friends, you want to get married, you want to have any kind of relationship with anybody, it's deeper. You just try to be the best person you can be. And if you are not trying to be the best person you can be, if you're really just trying to be a scumbag, don't be surprised if somebody says at some point, I can't trust you anymore. That's all I have to say. You know, that. So I'm going to wrap this up, maybe make it part three, because there's still more things I want to talk about with this. Catch you guys soon.